Hello, and uh, welcome to the first lesson in popular music, themes and streams of popular music. All right, let's begin. So the first thing we have to know or to remember is to listen critically. And, and what does listening critically actually mean? So it means listening that consciously seeks out meaning in music by drawing on knowledge of how music is put together. So your understanding of music theory and, and music history as well and combining all of that into, um, into actually listening critically. What are we listening for? What types of instrumentation are there? Um, not simply to put the music on in the background. Right? And it's really important to, to understand when things actually sound wrong and, ooh, that's not a good chord or that sound is way too loud and, and so on and so forth. Right? There's reverberation, there's feedback. Um, it, it's important to understand when those sounds uh, don't sound correct. So formal analysis, right? Listening for music, musical structure, excuse me, it's basic building blocks and the ways in which these blocks are combined. So we look at the process of music um, and, and much of popular music draws on a limited number of basic formal structures. These structures combine different things, different concepts such as um, timbre, right? Which is the tone or the color of music. Um, timbre, we say timbre because it comes from French Timbre, timbre, um, not timber, um, but we also look at lyrics. Uh, we look at the words of the song, the dialect of the song, the genre. Is it rock and roll? Is it rap? Is it hip hop? Is it R&B? Is it jazz? Is it classical? What are we listening for? Now, you have to remember, popular music, it's not pop music, not as we know it today. We call it popular music because it was popular at the time that it was played. So these concepts, riff, hook, groove, timbre, right? The tone of the sound, the quality of the sound, right? Think of timbre in this way. Um, think of you and your family in a dark room, right? You can recognize when a member of your family is speaking even without seeing them speak because you understand, you can hear the quality, the tone of their voice and you can pinpoint, ah, that's my dad, that's my mom, right? Tambra is that sound quality, right? The tone of the sound. So music and identity. Music as a means of expressing identity. So, for example, um, when we're young, in adolescence, right, music is all about co comfort and continuity, right? Images of gender identity, culturally specific ways of being masculine and feminine, ethnicity and race. This makes up um, music and identity. Music plays an important role in bringing narratives to life. Popular music which is closely tied to stereotypes. But popular music challenges these stereotypes, as we will see with rap and R&B, as well as some of the tunes um, during the wars, Vietnam War. There's a lot of protest music out there that challenges the stereotypes of music and society. Music and technology, right? Technology has shaped popular music. Mass media, okay, has declined in personal music. There's a decline, excuse me, in personal music making. Um, there's an encouragement of passive listening. So people just listening, not necessarily playing. Um, sales figures for musical instruments, right? suggests that millions of people are actually making music, right? Technology in terms of um, computer technology, software, electronic instruments, such as the electric guitar and bass, right? These show that musical instruments and that um, technology and mass media um, 
there is a gap between musicians and their audiences, but it's it is kind of small, right? It's not huge. Um, there are technologies out there that encourage active involvement in music, involving relationships between human musicality and technology, right? In the picture pictured, you've got Guitar Hero, right? This bridging of the gap between human musicality, what we can actually do, and the technology in, in terms of us doing it. There's an evolution there. The music business. So, production of popular music involves the work of many individuals performing different roles. There's a rise of radio, recording, and movies, which becomes the primary means for popularizing music. There's a lot of mainstream popular music, right? Composer and lyricists. Um, there's the role of the arranger, who writes and reworks the songs to the performer's strength such as key and repeating of things um in rock and roll you've got performers as songwriters and arrangers the producer big job convincing board of directors to back a project right hey this is some good sound let's throw some money let's throw some talent let's throw some technology some time in developing this musician um, music engineers, right? They make decisions about the balance between voice and instruments, the use of effects, and other factors that shape the overall sound of a record. The publicity department, right? They're in charge of advertising campaigns, public relations. They handle interactions with the press. And there's so many other different roles and people involved in the music business and the industry that make musicians who they are today um, successful. But things are unpredictable. The music industry, there it ebbs and flows, goes up and down. As new technologies come out, some things in the music industry drop away. For example, right when Apple and iTunes came out, the idea of um, CDs and cassette tapes, boom, dropped off. Many people thought that was the end of the music industry when music really turned digital in the 21st century but in 2012 there were four transitional corporations that controlled at least 80 percent of the world's legal trade and commercially recorded music you've got universal music group sony warner brothers and emi group there was this trend toward consolidating um the music industry Now, there are centers, as a theme, there are centers and peripheries of music. We talk about them in terms of geographical centers, like New York, Los Angeles, Nashville, where a lot of music is pumped out. That would be hubs, geographical centers of where this music is produced and created. Power, capital, control over mass media are, co are concentrated in these centers. Uh, up to the 1950s, mainstream American popular music Okay, was unfortunately oriented towards white or Caucasian, uh, middle or upper class people who were generally Protestant, not Catholic or Christian, and for the urban people, the everyday user. Now, when we talk about peripheries, these are smaller institutions and those that are historically excluded from the political and economic mainstream. For example... African Americans, poor Southern white people, working class people, um, Jewish and Latin American immigrants, adolescents, LGBTQ community, people who differ from the mainstream. They are considered on the periphery. Supposedly, marginal music repeatedly invigorated the center of popular taste and the music industry. So the people most responsible for creating this music are those that are less equitable to share of the, to get uh, a share of the profits. So we have a lot of indie musicians who are pumping up their music because they're passionate about music. Sure, they want to make a few bucks, but they're not really taking a good chunk of that for themselves. The industry is, is taking that from them. Uh, here, so... 
the sources of popular music come from um, New York and the South, traditionally. But, uh, excuse me, sorry. Um, but the, the European-American stream of music is kind of where it's at. Um, uh, th there's a lot going on in terms of Europe and, and that stream of popular music as kind of a both a center and as a periphery. So there's lots of things going on. Uh, cultural, linguistic dominance of English. So English becomes the mainstream. We've got different forms of music like ballads, verses, um, strophic music, which comes from poetry, broadsides, and the chorus. English ballads. Okay, we've got lots going on in terms of the English ballad traditions. Um, these would be like opera style traditions. So we've got things like the Beggar's Opera, written in 1728 by John Gay. Right, who design it was designed to counter the domination of British, British the British stage by Italian composers and musicians. Um, we have the ballad tradition in America. Right, songs are reworked to suit the life circumstances of new immigrants. The core of the tradition comes from musical forms and storytelling techniques that were carried on in contemporary and country Western music. For example, we've got these thin, nasalized tones, which are used a lot today as markers of Southern and kind of that white identity of music. Um, we have many published collections of Irish, Scottish, and Italian songs that influence uh, the development of early American popular music, uh, such as Thomas More's Irish Melodies and many of the Italian operas um, and bel canto style of music and singing we've got uh dance music right which is closely modeled on styles imported from england and the continent country dances which is like square dancing right come from dance music we've got waltz gallops um, ballroom polkas are all part of this dance music stream we've got folk music which was popularized from immigrants uh, that were coming to the United States, coming to North America from different parts of Europe. We've got Irish folk music um, from the potato famine of the 1840s. People come from Ireland and Germany uh, to seek refuge in North America, brought their music along with them and their um, cultural and historical backgrounds, which influenced that type of music in terms of folk music. Um, there's many different um, traditions of religious music. We've got um, Protestant religious music. We've got spirituals. Um, we've got the, well, within spirituals, we've got call and response singing, right? The preacher lining out or singing each line of a given song and then the congregation repeating that. We've got gospel music. Um, we've got cantillation which is chanting of scripture, especially in the Jewish tradition. Um, and you'll see that um, cantillation is influenced, has influenced some of the melodic lines composed uh, by great Jewish songwriters of the Tin Pan Alley era. Uh, and we get a lot of um, Christmas music that comes out of this as well, you know, sacred music of, of religious content. Uh, we've got a lot of old time music. So when you're listening, when you're listening to old time music and British ballads, um, I want you to think of um, that idea of timbre. What style? What is the tone? What is the quality of the music coming out of these? What instruments are being played? How are they recorded? What is the quality of those recordings? Um, this, uh, we have a lady, uh, Barbara Allen. Oh, sorry, Jean, this is Jean Ritchie. Sorry, Jean Ritchie's in the photo. Um, Barbara Allen was documented in 1666 in London and included Francis J. Child's English and Scottish popular uh, ballads. They are impossible to know when it was introduced into the English colonies in North America. 
Um, it included some of the earliest recordings of rural American folk music, uh, ballads that tell stories. Over centuries, individual performers embellished melodies and altered details of the story. Um, here we have Jean Ritchie. Uh, she is a folk singer and, and song collector. Um, her performance have inspired uh, Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger. Um, let's keep moving here. So we've also got uh, string bands, right, with banjos, which were plucked string instruments uh, with a piece of animal skin or plastic stretched over a circular frame. This comes from uh, Africa. It's an African-American invention based on African prototypes. Um, which were actually adopted by Caucasian or white players in the 18th century, so the 1700s. Earliest 20th century instruments such as guitar, mandolin, the auto harp, uh, and double bass were introduced. We've got these folks, the skillets, Skillet Lickers, greatest name. Um, they are the one of the very first southern string bands to appear on commercial records. James Gideon... Uh, James Gideon Tanner, excuse me. Uh, he is the leader of the band. Okay, you can see him directly square in the middle. Okay, uh, and he's got other people playing with him as well. Um, and they, they have that old timey feel to them, that old time repertoire, that old time sound, that scratchy type record sound um, that, that you see in a lot of those old saloon type uh, films. So here's just one uh, song I highly recommend that you you um, search up Soldier's Joy by Tommy Gerald. Okay, um, Tommy Gerald, he's very influential. Uh, he's a fiddle player and banjo, banjo player from North Carolina. Um, uh, there's a documentary, it's called Sprout Wings and Fly. It's a touching portrait of the fiddler. Uh, a few years before his death, or before Tommy Gerald's death. Um, now, the African-American stream. So it's really important to understand that this stream comes from the transatlantic um, slave trade. Almost 4 million slaves in the United States out of a total of 31 million people uh, were slaves in the... Um, mid to late 19th century, so 1860 and onward. The discussion of genesis of African-American music, right, we must engage with the painful topic of slavery and the culture that was forged from it. We get this ideal of the creolized, right, a mixture of cultures, right, especially uh, in southern United States, in New Orleans, Right, the Creole culture, the mixing of French um, colonists with African uh, slaves. The Deep South is where this music really grew. Right, jazz started in the Deep South in New Orleans with um, work songs and uh, ballads, uh, which eventually would turn into blues. Right, songs of these people's daily lives, African American slaves' daily lives. Music, dance, and verbal improvisation, okay, these were skills that played a role in racial stereotyping. Right? But they were elements in slave struggle to survive. Right? Music and dance was that gateway, was that avenue for people to escape the daily lives of, of slavery. Now, these, these slides are going to be on uh, Google Classroom. I'm, I'm not going to go through each one. You can read them on your own. They're just for you, some, some background knowledge in terms of the different streams of popular music that we're going to take a look at. Okay, there's some really good songs, um, banjo uh, songs that are influenced by West African traditions that were brought over to the United States in the late 19th century um, during the slave uh, the slave trade. Okay, and there's some really, really great tunes out there. Um, for example, we've got uh, Mississippi John Hurt. Okay, he he was a great guitar player, also a banjo player. 
um, but create a lot of ballads um, that transcended his experience um, in the southern United States at that time. Right, working in the fields and, and what life was really like. Now, this was in the late 19th uh, to early 20th century. But there was this revival in, in music that then transcended across the United States and really blew jazz up. Uh, another stream is the Latin American stream. Where... We get a lot of influences from Spain, Portugal, and France. And many of the slaves during the transatlantic slave trade would travel from West Africa uh, to the Caribbean islands like Cuba and um, Turks and Caicos, uh, as well as to Southern America. So we have Brazil as well as uh, Mexico in Central America as well. Now, in Cuba, we have a lot of African-influenced variants of French country dance traditions, right? Where a lot of the influence extended to popular music in the United States um, and throughout Central America and through South America as well. Uruguay uh, being a big, big country um, for, for Cuban contradanza style. Okay, we've got the influence of tango by Cuban... Uh, habanero rhythms, okay, uh, influence from Italian and Spanish popular songs um, and dances as well. Uh, in 1914, the tango was promoted in the United States by dance stars Irene and Vernon Castle. Okay, these were big, big stars uh, at that time. Uh, we've get we got the rumba or the rumba, um, which also have its roots in Cuba. Um, and was developed from rural um, Cuban country music, right? It spread to Havana, where it was played by professional, professional dance bands. Um, and it was, it was very exciting. It was a style that was really exciting and added rhythms from rumba um, that mixed with traditional African rhythms and movements and dance styles. We get the Brazilian samba. The carioca, right? Smooth style based in Rio de Janeiro. Um, these are all different styles. And, and really, um, the Brazilian samba style, which is boosted in the 1940s okay, uh, by a, a person called Carmen Miranda, very, very famous, famous uh, Brazilian. Um, but this spawned one of the most famous songs out there. Um, the girl from Impanina, uh, Impanima, excuse me, a very, very famous song. Um, and then we get uh, styles from Mexico, okay, um, the Conjunto Acordeon, okay, the Rancheros, the Corrido, the Banda, all of these different styles develop from um, the Latin American stream. Like I said before, um, African influences, especially from West Africa, um, are seen throughout the Caribbean, throughout uh, Latin America, throughout Central America, and then into the southern United States, especially into California, um, as well as Florida, where there's a heavy presence of, of Latin American people in the United States. Uh, we get mariachi, uh, comes from the Latin American stream. La Negra, performed by the Mariachi Vargas de Tecalitlan, which was released in 1959. The traditional mariachi bands of the Yalijo um, and the city of Guadalajara. Right? You get these traditional sounds, but they all derive from Afri West African roots through the transatlantic um, slave trade. That would be the Latin American stream of popular music. So that's all we have. Uh, here are just some key terms. 
like I said, this presentation is going to be on Google Classroom, so you can read through it at your own pace as well. Um, and here are some key people. Um, and I would really uh, press for you to take a look at Carlos Gardel, Tommy Gerald, and the Skillet Liquors. Um, those are some really interesting sounding groups. All right. That's it for now. Thank you very much. Adios.